Welcome to another episode of Cheater Stories read by Ebony White. Today is April 2nd, 2019. I am trying out some new contacts today. They are a bright blue. First time trying these out. I kind of freaked my kids out today when I picked them up from school. Those who are watching Cheater Stories on YouTube, comment below and let me, let me know what you think about the blue eyes today. Okay, so what we have here 30 of the most repulsive cheating stories you've ever read and won't be able to stop reading. We may not get through all 30 of them today and that's fine. We'll just continue another time. Number one, Valentine's Day. A customer came in on Valentine's Day, bought a $50 teddy bear, roses, chocolates, the works. He was super excited. Came in the next day to return them. He'd walked in on his girlfriend and another man. That's terrible, that sucks. Number two, incest cheating. Someone I know is getting a divorce because her husband is having an affair with his 13 year old cousin. Ugh. Apparently the age thing isn't as big a deal legally in their location as the incest thing, but the whole situation is all sorts of fucked up. And I agree. The fact that she's a cousin and the fact that she's 13, and he's married, so that's three strikes. Number three, doing amateur porn. I had a former coworker find out his wife was filming a lot of amateur porn, being paid next to nothing after being married for a few years. He found out when he found one of her DVDs hidden in the house. Now, why would she bring a DVD home? Why would you do that? I mean, not that I'm on her side, but that's just really stupid. He assumed it was a gift for his birthday in two weeks and watched it when she wasn't around. When he confronted her, her only reply was she was doing it for him. He imploded after that and needed counseling for a few months after the divorce was finalized. But imploding on a human being is just astronomical. That means all the damage is on the inside all that damage and it can't be seen like no one sees it no one sees you throwing fits of anger fits of rage i mean not that he didn't have any of that but for the most part it's on the inside it seems like it would be like a slow burn like a slow death like a slow car wreck but just like on the inside and that's awful because one like no one can see your pain or your pain is like it's kind of hidden it's subtle and people don't quite know or you might just seem a little off you know which is so much different to if you explode and everyone knows it's like whoa 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 you know let's get this guy some help or you know let's get away from this guy um it's just awful that's awful i've actually experienced that myself like i'm i'm going through that myself so I know. Number four, scumbag dad. Dad had an affair while working overseas. Tells mom a year later, makes her wait a week to tell the kids so we're left wondering why mom is crying all the time. Dad promptly walks out right after the bomb is dropped leaving kids and wife devastated. Don't hear from him for the next four months then proceeds to torment mother for the next year making her believe they might salvage the relationship. I mean, why would she want to, um, okay, never, never mind, I'm not going into it. Fast forward three years, brings a woman from overseas and marries her, oh my God, in the courthouse without telling either of his children until two months afterwards. Meet my scumbag dad. I like how this was written. Uh, I'm not sure like of the technical term of how it's written. It's written in a way where she's like detached from her dad as if she's writing about another family, not her own family, you know? I like how she wrote it like in other person or whatever person that is, you know what I mean? All right, I had to switch phones, but we're okay. Okay, number five, cheated in their bed. My girlfriend of five and a half years cheated on me while I was asleep in the next room in our bed. Okay, wait a minute. My girlfriend of five and a half years cheated on me while I was asleep in the next room in our bed. I found out the next day. 
I remember her coming in to kiss me at some point in the night. I never had the stones to ask whether it was before or after. That is so sad. Four boyfriends and a purse, number six. I heard this story from a friend who's friends with a girl who has four boyfriends. On her birthday, she requested that all four boyfriends buy her the same purse. Neither knew of each other, right? The boyfriends complied and she sold three of the purses for money. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's kind of smart and really scumbag at the same time. And kept one of them. So she sold three of the purses and kept one of them. All four boyfriends are extremely pleased when they see her wearing the purse he got her. This story sickens me to the court. That is sickening. Seven, shifting priorities. I was living with my girlfriend of two years at the time. She was going to grad school, or she was going to go to grad school in a new state. The plan was to switch jobs and move so she could go to grad school. I knew no one in the new state and hadn't been there before. Okay, so he was gonna switch jobs so he could follow her. I secured a job and moved out a few weeks early to find housing. It was then that she decided she wasn't sure what she wanted from the relationship and would cheat. Oh my gosh. Thus beginning the most confusing and frustrating three to four months of my life. On the bright side, I really enjoy I've really enjoyed the new state, have met awesome people, and the job is pretty awesome. Wow, okay. So luckily, I mean, <laughs> he was able to secure a good job and moved out, found housing. I'm assuming he found housing. Now, I was kind of holding my breath there for a few seconds because... I thought it was going to be a real doozy. He doesn't say which way she decided. He doesn't mention if she decided to stay or if they decided to separate. So I don't know. But um, that's pretty messed up what she did. But I'm glad it worked out in the end for him. Okay. Number eight. Seven years without knowing. Dot, dot, dot. Mm. Okay. We met when we were both young. We hit it off and get together. We moved to her homeland. Oh, God. <laughs> he, he moved to a different country. I struggle with the new country, new language, getting a job, and all that shit. A few years into this, I find out there's some, some other guy. We fight. We make up. She promises not to see him again. Oh, my gosh. I don't want to be a... I don't want to be a dictator. So when I find out she is still meeting him sometimes for lunch, I just try and be cool on and off for years I would worry about this and I would ask her regularly if shit between us was cool and she would make me feel like all was good we move cities we get a nice apartment we start planning kids what oh my gosh oh my gosh so oh my gosh this sounds so bad right now I have to stop because like there are so many red flags and he was so hopeful and he trusted her. He trusted her. That's the problem with relationships. Like, we trust these people. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. Like, why is she still meeting him for lunch? Like, I see something wrong with that because, she, for one, like, she promised she wouldn't see him again. You know? And... Okay, he's a good mate. The fact that he was trying not to control her, he was trying to be cool, he's a good mate, okay? Very understanding dude. But, I mean, all right. So, <sighs> we start planning kids. He wants to have kids with this woman. This liar. She's a liar. She's sneaking around behind his back. She's conniving. She's a liar. And he wants to have kids with her? Not a good move. I ask her to marry me. We have a huge engagement party. A year or two later, wait, how many years are we in here? We have a massive sick wedding. We have a crazy honeymoon. We start to pick dates on starting with the kid. We have a kid. A week ago, 
I see yet another text from this dude and I just snap. Holy shite. I go into uber detective mode, start cross-examining her. I pick out some details. I isolate her best friend and start getting shit out of her. My wife lies every fucking minute, denying details, swearing shit to my face, but 10 minutes later, admitting more shit. For three fucking weeks, every night is a nightmare as I try to come to terms with whatever new shit she just admitted. And in the morning, I would ask yet again, is that really it? And no, there was always more. But what more? What is it? What is it? In the end, I just go to this fucking guy's house and he breaks down and tells me everything. They have been regular fuck buddies for seven fucking years. During our engagement, wedding, Right up to where we started to go for kids. DNA test is in the mail. My wife was banging him bareback, actually contracted genital warts off him, and never thought to mention it. His partner, this whole time, also had no clue. So, he's in a relationship too. Fuckboy is in a relationship too. My wife fucked him in our own bed and when I was away visiting family. I knew, I knew she was fucked up. I knew it. I, like, I had to pause. That's why I had to pause. Cause I knew it, shit was off. Like the fact that you, when people feel the need to sneak around, when they feel like they can't share something with you, it's because they know what they're doing is fucked up. They know it's going to hurt you. They know it's going to ruin your relationship. That's why they keep it a secret. Um, I don't think... Wait a minute. They do have a kid. Oh my gosh, they have a kid. Alright, so... She was fucking this guy in their bed. Um... An almost 15 year relationship down the fucking drain. I wouldn't even mind so much, but this guy's a big fat fucking mess. And so, fuck boy is a slob. He's a fucking mess, but really, honestly, if he was ripped to shreds, would that really make a difference? I don't think so. It wouldn't matter to me what he or she looked like, you know? It wouldn't matter. That was a really good story because he gave details. I like how it was written. Anyway, number nine, a rowdy bachelor party. I had a friend whose husband cheated on her during his bachelor party. Apparently, there were two strippers who let guys touch them, like really touch them. Everyone took turns fisting them. Okay. Then they took their groom into a room and fucked him. Nobody said a thing to my friend, of course, and the wedding happened a few days later. Since then, he has cheated on her many times and she stays with him because she confronts him about things she finds out about and he cries and is really sorry. I had to stop being friends with her. Okay, I don't like how I read that. Let's back up. Since then, he has cheated on her many times, and she stays with him because when she confronts him about things she finds out about, he cries and is, quote-unquote, really sorry I had to stop being friends with her. I don't blame her because I'm pretty sure the friend got tired of hearing about the shit. You know, at some point, you get tired of hearing about it, and if the person, like, is just not going to do anything about it, but we don't know. We don't know if they had kids we don't know what the situation was but apparently the friend found it so disgusting that she couldn't stomach it anymore she couldn't hear about it anymore she got fed up maybe i don't know but yeah she the best friend cut out and that's really sad Ugh. Ugh. Mm. number 10 this one's pretty confusing it's only four lines my fiance had an affair. I took her back, found a way to forgive. Then, in all caps, she broke up with me. 
You didn't get mad enough, she explained. Okay. Do you understand that one? She broke up with him because he didn't get mad enough? I don't even want to begin to get into the psychology behind that. I don't even want to. That's enough. I'm going to cut it short right there. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I know I did. Maybe next time we'll pick up where we left off. I'm not sure. All right. Thanks for listening to Cheater Stories read by me, Ebony White. Thanks for watching. If you're watching and you like this, please like the video and subscribe. If you're listening, you know, please keep tuning in and subscribe to my channel. Leave a review on Apple or uh, Google, whichever platform you're using. Please leave a review with some stars. Oh, have a good week and I will see you soon. Bye.